powerful, impactful, life-changing. This is the teaching ministry of Apostle Faith Manobuera, where supernatural things are happening through the anointed Word of God. This prolific preacher and dynamic teacher of God's Word is changing lives all over the world. Are you ready? Because your life will never be the same. Your success is directly related to your submission to God's Word. We are not here to do what we think or feel. We are here to do what God's word has approved. If you're going to succeed in life, God must come first in everything you do. And faith in God does not fail because its origin is God. Here is Apostle Faith Man Obweda. Glory be to God. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad. You are welcome to 90 Days of All Nations Crusade and today is day 28 and we'll be talking about power to cast out devils. <laughs> okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. In Christ Jesus, we have authority. Authority over evil spirits. In Christ Jesus, we have authority and we have authority over evil spirit. We, we have authority over evil spirits. We have authority over forces of darkness. And we are called into a life of power. We are not expected to be dominated by evil spirits. We are not expected to be subdued by witchcraft power or demonic spirits. We are, we are not expected to be subdued by forces of darkness. Because we are the sons of God. And we are carrying the power of God. No evil spirit have the authority to harass you. No evil spirit have the authority to harass you. No evil spirit has the authority to sit on your, on your marriage, sit on your destiny. Like how many Christians will say, there is a spirit sitting on my life. There is a spirit sitting on my job, on my finance. All of those things is as a result of lack of knowledge that you hear Christians say things like this, that this spirit is sitting on my life and sitting on my job. This spirit is sitting on... How can you say an evil spirit is sitting on your life? When the Bible said, greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. First John 4 verse 4 said, Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. So how come you said that an evil spirit is sitting on your life, is sitting on your destiny? First John 4 verse 4. First John 4 verse 4. It said, Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. The greater one lives inside of us. You see, if we lack the revelation of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, we cannot escape the abuse of the enemy. I said, if we lack a revelation of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what we can do with the Christ in us, we cannot escape the abuse of the enemy. We cannot escape the abuse of the enemy. The abuse of the enemy will continue until we have the revelation of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what we can do with the Christ in us. The reason why a lot of Christians are victims of witchcraft, victims of demonic oppression, is their inability to walk in the revelation of who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ, and what they can do with the Christ in them. We have the power to cast out evil spirits. 
we have the power. I, I want to show you a scripture here in Luke chapter 10. I'd like you to go to Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10, glory be to God. In Luke chapter 10, I'd like us to read from verse 17. Luke chapter 10 from verse 17. Luke 10 from verse 17, he said, And the 70 returned again with joy. The 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. This is the apostles, the disciples of Jesus, they came back and they were telling Jesus that the devils were subject. The devils were subject to them. They were telling Jesus that the devils were subject. How did they function in that revelation authority of who they are and they return back and the devils were subject to them? There is no demon in hell that is as powerful as the new creation in Christ Jesus. There is no demon in hell that is as powerful as any born again child of God. You know why? The Bible said your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The Bible also talks about greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. You know, when I hear Christians talking about, oh, I have to war with the enemy, I have to war with the enemy, we're not supposed to war with the enemy. We have advantage over the enemy. We have advantage. We're not supposed to war with the enemy. You know, some people say, war with the enemy, war with the enemy. No, we're not supposed to war with the enemy. We're supposed to command the enemy. If you're warring with the enemy, that means you're in the same level with the enemy. That simply means the victory of Jesus is not is not applicable to the cannot be applied to the situation. When you say we are at war with the enemy, we are warring, we're gonna war with the enemy. You know, when people preach sometimes they make you feel like it's true. We are gonna war with the enemy, we're gonna war with it. that's not what the Bible teaches. We have we are superior to the enemy. We are superior. We have authority over witchcraft. We have authority over Satan. So when you hear people preach that message, we're going to be at war with the enemy, we're going to be at war with the enemy, they are descending to a low level of operation. They are trying to position themselves that they are at war with the devil. But Jesus said he made an open show and he gave us authority. All power in heaven and on earth belong to Jesus and he gave it to the church. The church is not at war with the devil. The church is in control. And how is the church in control? When the church begins to use her authority according to God's word, no force of darkness can withstand the church. No force of darkness can, start, can stop the church. You know, you know, the first thing I wanted us to know is renewing your mind will lead to the use of your authority. Renewing your mind with God's word. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. You know, we need to renew our mind in the knowledge of who we are in Christ, what we have in Christ, and what we can do with the Christ in us. We have authority. We have authority. Don't behave as if you have no authority. If you're born again, you have authority. You have authority over any demon that will show up any day, anywhere, anytime. In the name of Jesus, that demon will bow. In the name of Jesus, no demon is so powerful that it can contain with the name of Jesus Christ. The name of Jesus is so powerful. The name of Jesus is so powerful. You know, I had a, a vision. I was sharing it in prayer and prophesy to you. Day. I had a vision breaking this morning. In that vision, I was praying. It was like a, a kind of demonic creature showed up in that vision. Then I said, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. So I knew in my spirit that the, the, the creation, the creature was going to turn into something else. Then it turned into something else. Then I had the creature. In a vision, breaking this morning, I heard the creature. Now, 
when I woke up, I told my wife something. I said, the blood of Jesus is so powerful that many Christians don't know the efficacy, the power in the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. So I won't say this to you. There is a healing in the name of Jesus. There is a power in the name of Jesus. It means authority. I took control over the situation in the realm of the spirit. When that demon transformed into something else, I had the demon. That is a position of authority. I was in control in that vision. Because I understood my spiritual position in Christ Jesus. He said in Hebrew, sorry, in Revelation 12, verse 2. So Revelation 12, verse 11. Revelation, Revelation 12, verse 11. He said, we overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. How do we overcome? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. We have authority over foul spirits. You see, a lot of Christians open door for the enemy unknown to them. They open door through strife, through envy, through jealousy, through hatred, through malice, through unforgiveness. Those are the doors they could open for Satan. Satan can come into someone's life through malice, through bitterness, through unforgiveness, through all of those things are major things the enemy can use to come into the life of a person. This is why the Bible told us to walk in love. This is why the Bible told us to forgive. This is why the Bible told us to live according to God's word. Because if we don't live according to God's word, we cannot function in our dominion. Walking in love is the pathway to unlocking the spiritual authority. I said walking in love is the pathway to unlocking your spiritual authority. I said walking in love is the pathway to unlocking your spiritual authority. We cannot truly unlock our spiritual authority except we're walking in love. Except we're walking in love. When we walk in love, it helps us to manifest the kingdom of God. If you're truly going to manifest the kingdom in different dimensions, you have to be someone who walks in love. The knowledge of God's love can keep you away from strife, which is the major weapon of Satan. The knowledge of walking in love can keep you away from strife, which is the major weapon of the enemy. The major weapon the enemy can use against you is strife, is bitterness, is 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 uh, is much malice, in, you know, hate, you know, strife, contention. You know, all of those things are weapon of Satan. Unforgiveness can open door for demonic manipulation in your life. This is why you gotta forgive people. You forgive for the purpose of your blessing. You forgive for the purpose of securing your future. If you don't walk in forgiveness, you cannot flow in power. If you don't walk in forgiveness, bitterness has a way of creating a limitation in the spiritual atmosphere of your life. Bitterness has a potential to create a limitation in the spiritual atmosphere of your life. This is why you forgive. This is why you let go. It doesn't matter what they have done to you. Let go. You let go as you can flow in power. You let go as you can flow in dominion. That is why we let go. Someone is watching this broadcast right now. You can cast out devils. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. Now let's get back to Luke 10, verse 17. And the, the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. The devils are subject. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. He said, even the devils are subject. Look at it here. Jesus have not died when these apostles, when these uh, disciples of Jesus said the devils are subject. Jesus have not hung on the cross, have not died. And the demons we are subject. This is powerful. You know, a lot of people don't know this. This is so powerful that the demons were subject. Jesus have not died. He, they, they came back and said, in your name, the demons are subject to us. And look at verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fell from heaven. Wow. How many people know this? Vex 12, we're reading Vex, Vex 18 right now. Luke chapter 10, Vex 18. Luke chapter 10, Vex 18. He said, And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fell from heaven. Like lightning, he fell. 
this is it. Some people talk about, oh, the enemy is doing this, the enemy is doing that. It's not as powerful as preached. Not as powerful as presented in most books. The devil is not as powerful as many Christians subscribe power to him. He's not as powerful as that. It is the church who magnifies this. Some part of the church, some people in church give so much power to the devil. They give so much credit to the devil. Oh, the devil is doing this. The devil is doing that. The, 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 the devil was, was a serpent in Genesis. But before he got to Revelation, it was a dragon. You know, was something, you know, because they praised him until he grew big like that. He grew big that way. We use our words to say, oh, the enemy is doing this. Oh, the enemy is doing that. How can you put the enemy in charge of your faith? How can you say the enemy is the one killing me? You are supposed to be casting out the demons. You are supposed to be using your authority so why are you saying that? Why are you saying the enemy wants me to lose my job? The enemy. He doesn't have that kind of power. The enemy doesn't have the power to kill. <laughs> he doesn't have the power to afflict you. You know why? Christ in you, the hope of glory. A lot of Christians are not walking in the revelation of their authority in Christ Jesus and as a result of poor teaching, you have wrong prayers. You see people praying all kinds of dirty prayers. When we are supposed to be exercising our authority, they are scared. They are scared of the spirit. They are scared of that spirit. Look at Paul, the apostle. One man stepped into a city and the fire of God was everywhere. One man stepped into the city. Things was happening. He was a mighty man of God. He was a man of fire. Look at this verse. verse. Look at the next verse. Verse 19. Luke 10, 19. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Power over all the powers. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Look at that scripture. He said, nothing shall by any means hurt you. Look at that. He said, nothing. So why are you afraid? Why are you, why are you talking about the enemy? Look at the scripture. This is why you got to read the scripture. You have the power. If you're born again, you have the power to cast out demons. You have the power to cast out demons. But wrong teaching has caused most of church people to shrink back. Wrong teaching. You have the power over the enemy. You have the power over the enemy. So if you see anything going wrong around you, exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Exercise your authority. Always be conscious of your authority in Christ. Whenever something wrong trying to come up, exercise your authority. You have authority over the spirit. You have authority over that wickedness, over that deception. You have authority over that spirit. Why? Because you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. I want to read uh, that same. Okay. Let's look at, uh, praise God, Luke chapter 9, verse 1. In Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. In Luke 9, verse 1, he said something. He said, Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power. He called the 12 disciples together and he did what? And he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Wow. He gave them power over all devils. <laughs> Read your Bible. He's there in the scriptures. Praise the Lord. He gave them power over all devils. All. <laughs> it doesn't matter whether they call them principality, they call them power, they call them witchcraft, whatever they call them. <laughs> I should put this on my feet to remind me. That's good. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's good. Put it on your fridge. 
Bring this scripture out and put it on your fridge. That's it. Look at it. Look at it. Look at it. <laughs> Look at it. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. He said, Then he called his twelve disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils. Wow. <laughs> Look at this scripture. Power over all. All the devil. All the devil. It doesn't matter how many names they have. They are departmental name. They are generational name. It doesn't matter what they call them. Principalities, powers, wickedness in high places. No matter how the names and the hierarchies are, he gave them power over all the devil. Jesus have not died and he said this. So what is going to happen when Jesus died and resurrected? What is going to happen? He gave them power over all the devils. So all the devils right now, we have power over them. Because we are the disciples of Jesus. We are new creations. This is why, they, you know, this is powerful. Let, let me show you something here. In Colossians chapter 1. Let me look at Colossians chapter 1. I'm so going to show you in Colossians chapter 1. And this is going to be very beautiful for you because you like this. In Colossians 1, let's look at verse 12 and 13. Colossians 1, verse 12 and 13. He said, Giving thanks unto the Father which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Verse 13 said, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? Wow. Do you hear this? He said, who has delivered us? So when you hear a Christian come and tell you, if you see what the devil has done to me, look at what the devil has done to me. They have not read this scripture. <laughs> they have not read this scripture. <laughs> when you hear a Christian come and tell you, look at what the enemy is doing, look at what the enemy is doing, they have not read this. He said, who has delivered us from the, power, from the power of darkness? We are delivered. We are delivered. We are no longer under the influence of the power of darkness. We are delivered. We are not there. We don't live there anymore. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Right now we are in the kingdom. Right now, we are in the kingdom of God. We are living in the kingdom. The kingdom has started. The kingdom of God. We are, we are living in the kingdom. Right now, we are in the kingdom. And because we are in the kingdom, we are expected to flow in the power of God. We are expected to exercise our authority over any evil spirit, over any force of darkness. Why? Because we are the sons of God. The scripture is Colossians chapter 1, Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12 and 13. So he said in verse 13, he said, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness? I'd like you to put asterisks. If you're reading it in your Bible, I'd like you to mark it. I'd like you to. These are the scriptures you print and paste on your fridge. If possibly on your car, maybe inside your, close to your, you're driving, where you're holding, you're steering, you print it and just paste it. Who has delivered us all from the power of darkness? That, that's so powerful. You, you, write, you, 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 you print it out and you paste it near your glass. When you turn, you look at it. We have been delivered from the power of darkness. That's powerful. Reminding yourself that. Telling yourself that. Those are the scriptures. You have the power to cast our demons out. You have the power to walk in authority. You have the power to flow in the things of the Spirit. You have the power to walk in dominion. Because we are the sons of God. Because we understand the kingdom of God. Because we understand how things of the Spirit flows. We are the sons of God. And we have the nature of God. And we have the wisdom of God. And we have the power of God. 
you know, beautiful. I want to show you another scripture that is so powerful, very powerful. I want to show you a very powerful scripture. These were the scriptures that changed my life many years ago. These are the scriptures that changed my life. I want to show you this. First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. In First Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24 it said, But unto them which are called, both the Jews and the Greek, Christ the power of God. Wow! Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. So if you have Christ in you, it means you're carrying the power of God in you. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24. That's good. So in 1 Corinthians 1 24 it said, But unto them which are called, unto them which are called, both the Jews and the Greek Christ, the power of God. Wow. Christ, the power of God. Christ, the power of God. Christ, the power of God. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. First Corinthians. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. Chapter 1, verse 24, it said, But unto them which are called both the Jews and the Greek, Christ, the power of God. Christ is the power of God. So if you have Christ in you, you're carrying the power of God. Christ, the power of God. That's it. I'm going to teach you maybe either tomorrow on that subject, Christ, the power of God. Tomorrow I'm going to, I may be, I may be teaching that tomorrow or later today. Let me see how my schedule is. Christ, the power of God. So if you have Christ in you, you are carrying the power of God. You're carrying the power of God. Christ, the power of God. So, because you're carrying the power of God, you can cast out demons out. You can prosper anywhere. You can succeed anywhere because you're carrying the power of God. Because you're carrying the power of God. If Christ is in you, you have all it takes to subdue any spirit. If Christ is in you, you are not supposed to be battling with generational causes. When I see Christians who talk about generational causes, I'll be looking at them strange. What's wrong with them? When I look at a Christian, he will come and they're talking about generational causes. I'll be looking at them. I say, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? You know, I, I, I just, you know, Satan has deceived many preachers. And he has given them a message that Christ never gave to them. Generation, generational causes is not for a new creation. If you're born again, you don't have to break generational causes. Because you are the seed of Abraham, I've been a Christian for 20 years, and it's counting. I have never stayed one day and said, Oh God, whatever that came from my family, I break it. The day I got born again, my identity changed. The day I got born again, I was born into the kingdom of God. I was born into the family of God. In John chapter 1 verse 12, as many that believe to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God. So where will the cause come from? Will the curse come from God? And the scripture said, Christ in me, the hope of glory. So where is the curse coming from? That a preacher is popular and is preaching, it doesn't mean you should believe that nonsense. That is not for new creation. That is not for someone who is born again. That's why I used to say to people, be born again. Don't be hanging around churches, be born again first. Some people hang around church, but they are not born again. So they go and they are breaking courses all the time. Breaking from one course to all the time. They are breaking courses and the course never break. That is why you go to this conference, they are breaking course. The next conference, they are breaking course. Every time they are breaking courses, the course never break. People are always breaking courses. Why are they not breaking? Why are they not breaking? They say, all oh, these course have to break. All these course have to break. All oh, these course have to break. They are always breaking. So when will they finally have liberty? Read Galatians 5 x 1. He says, stand in the liberty where which Christ has made you free. Don't entangle yourself again with the yoke of bondage. 
These are the messages that affected the life of many Christians. A lot of Christians today are moving from country to country looking for who will deliver them because they don't know who they are in Christ. They are looking for deliverance. They are looking for peace. They are looking for that. Because a lot of people are not committed to God. And if you are not committed to God, you will never enjoy the Christianity. You will never enjoy Christ. The best way to live your life is to give your life to the Word of God. I've been a Christian for more than 20 years. I don't understand what most people teach. It's strange. It's strange that you can hear some teaching, then you watch them and say, what are they talking about? What are they talking about? You can't even put it together. And many people are rushing to it because they like it. I asked a friend one day, why do people preach most of those things? He said, because it brings me so much money. It brings money to the preacher. I said, okay, that's why they do those things. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. All things has passed away. All things has become new. If any man be in Christ... If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. New creation have the power to cast out demons. They have the power to reign in life. Wow, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Greater is he that is in you than what is in the world. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Don't forget that. In him we live, move, and have our being. I need to show you that scripture maybe before we go. That's the last scripture I will take out. I'll be done. Okay, Acts 17. I want to show you that scripture. That's one of the powerful scriptures that helped me also. In Acts chapter 17, verse 28. Acts 17, 28. In Acts 17, 28, it said, For in him we live and move and have our being. For in him we live. Wow, I like this so much. For in him we live and have our being. A certain, a, a certain also of you, your own poet, have said, for we are also his offspring. For in him we live, for in him we move, for in him we have our being. This is powerful. Take those lines out, print it out, paste it. In Christ we live, in Christ we move, in Christ we have our being. That's where we are. <laughs> and when you have that revelation, you know, when you have that revelation, you will never live in limitation. You will always prosper in the knowledge of his will. I'm here to say to you, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Those are the scriptures. You have power. There is power in the name of Jesus there is power in the name of Jesus. God have highly exalted. In, take a study at a, a Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. We study it. Philippians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10. It talks about the name of Jesus. The power in the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus will cast our demons out. He said in my name, cast out them. Okay, let me do one last scripture. Sorry, I'm trying to say last, 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 last. I've done last scripture twice. Maybe now <laughs> it's, I'm finally going to have the last one. <laughs> the, the more I teach, the Holy Ghost will just drop this in the back. In Mark chapter 16, Mark 16, maybe I, I pray it's the last one. <laughs> Praise God. Well, <laughs> I'm trying to say the last scripture. Another one will come up. <laughs> Okay, in Mark chapter 15, okay, sorry, Mark 16 from verse 15, Mark 16 from verse 15, he said, and he said unto them, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And this sign shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, and they shall speak with new tongues. In my name. How did they cast out devils? In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So you have to be born again to do that. You have to be born again. You have to know the word to do that. He said, in my name, they will cast out devils. That's how it is. 
That's how you cast out devils. In the name of Jesus. Is there any scriptures? You cast out devils. And he said, and they shall take up serpents, and if they drink deadly things, they shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Praise God. Okay, someone said, don't have the gift of tongues. He said, okay, you can read Acts chapter 2, and I'm going to pray for you. You're going to receive it. I'm going to pray for you. You're going to receive the gift of tongues. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So this scripture we read here said, and this sign shall follow them that believe in my name, they shall cast out devils out. Praise the Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Now, I want to pray for those who have not received the gift of praying in tongues, the Holy Ghost. I'm going to pray for you and we'll believe together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for everyone who is believing you for the gift of praying in tongues. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive my shokuli kapra to seketoli bra kanuba li kanderevo sokotoli bra de seketoli blagara. I lay my hands upon you right now. Receive the gift of tongues in the name of Jesus. Receive the gift of tongues. Li kapra do seketoli kapa sotoli kapapa rekoto no proto sakatari proto seketoli kapapa kreto santali kapapa li ketele prado seketoli bra de seketoli bra kapapa li kokrodo sokora bra de seketoli bra kanderi korobo sakaliga mbrido sekotoli kapara na bashokoba receive in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, be baptized in the Spirit. Amen. Glory be to God. If you're watching this broadcast today and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, now listen to this. Giving your life to Jesus is the starting point of the use of authority. You can't truly use your authority except you're giving your life over to Christ. So if you're watching this broadcast right now, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to say this after me. Lord Jesus, I confess with my mouth, I believe in my heart. That God have raised Jesus from the dead. Thank you, Father, for saving me. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, you're born again and you will never remain the same. Hallelujah. You will never remain the same. The Holy Spirit have taken over your life. Now, I want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, our YouTube channel is a place where you can receive a lot of teaching. We'll have more than 700 videos on our YouTube channel. More than 700 videos on our YouTube channel. You know, and when you watch those videos, it will help you. Go to Faith Man Teaching. It's Faith Man Teaching on YouTube. More than 700 videos. And every day we'll keep adding new videos to that place. Faith Man Teaching, you subscribe. Now, we also have a Bible school called Christ Kingdom Bible School that we do for free. Christ Bible Kingdom Bible School is uh, on YouTube also. You can subscribe to Christ Kingdom Bible School on YouTube. And uh, we'll be having class later in the day today for Christ Kingdom Bible School. Later in the day today, we'll be having a class for our students for free. The class is for free. So, it's going to be here too. So, you go to Christ Kingdom Bible School on YouTube and subscribe. And you go to Faith Man Teaching and subscribe. Now, when you subscribe on these two platforms, it helps you to receive quality teachings that will help you to be effective in your work with God. Hallelujah. And also, you can send me friends requests on Facebook. You know, you can send me friends requests on Facebook. It's a Faith Man Faith Man of Weather Ministry. If you go to Facebook, you will see Faith Man of Weather Ministry. You can send me friends requests there. You can also send me friends requests on Faith Man of Weather. That's another page I have on Facebook. So go to Faith Man of Weather Ministry. Faith Man of Weather on Facebook. Apostle Faith Man of Weather is my official page. So go there, send us friends requests. We'll be able to minister to you, we'll be able to encourage you. If you want us to mentor you, we can share some things with you to help you grow in your work with the Lord and develop in your faith work. And also, we're encouraging people today to partner with us. We keep running all of this program through partnership. As you partner with us, it helps for you to keep subscribing and having all the data needed to run all of the broadcasts around the world. Now... 
Today, we're encouraging people to so sumptuously to just give sacrificially today so we'd like you to go to paypal or you want to do it through money grammar western union and you can sow into the ground of this ministry and when those seeds comes in it helps to be able to put things together that helps us to keep having this broadcast multiple times every day so we're encouraging you today to partner with the ministry it goes a long way to minister to the needs of so many people who are looking for God's word. Those who have been wrongly taught, they need to receive the revelation of God's word. So go to PayPal. It's Faithman Teaching. Faithman Teaching at gmail.com Or you can contact us to get information about Money Crime or Western Union as you can plant your seed and support the ongoing work of God in this ministry that is helping to reach more people every day. I just want you to understand that we are in ministry to change lives. That's the reason we do all of these teachings. We try to come here many times as we, we can. So keep your partnership with us. And I believe that a lot of lives will be changed. Right now we have, okay, okay, okay. You, you you can inbox me. If you inbox me, go to Faithman Ogwada on Facebook. Faithman Ogwada on Facebook and just inbox me. I can give you more information for that. Hallelujah. All those that needed information for, yes, yes, Friends of Christ, go to Friends, send me Friends of Christ on Faithman Ogwada, Faithman Ogwada or Faithman Ogwada Ministry and I'll be able to reply from there. God bless you. We want to encourage you to also share the videos. Whatever teachings that have blessed you, we'd like you to share it with your friends, with your loved ones. By so doing, we are moving the message forward. I alone can do it. I can just teach you, but you can also help to teach more people the word of God you have received. Thank you so much for watching this broadcast. I'm looking forward to seeing you in all our future broadcasts. Hallelujah. And please do enjoy your day. And don't ever forget there is greatness in you. God bless you.